One of the number one questions I'm asked is which keyboard should I buy? So I thought it would be fun to tell you some of my secrets for when you go keyboard shopping and show you my three favorite beginner entry level keyboards so that you can get an idea of what they're like and maybe it will help you make your decision. So the most important thing to keep in mind when you're going out keyboard shopping is to find something that has touch sensitive weighted keys. So what that means is when you play softly, you hear a soft sound. And when you play with a little bit more pressure, you get a bigger sound. Um, it also means that there's resistance on the key, so you know it takes a little bit of effort to push them down. And this is what mimics the feel of an acoustic piano, and it's really important for developing dexterity and strength in your fingers. The next most important thing is size. So 88 keys is ideal if you can, um, but if your space or your budget doesn't permit it, the minimum amount of keys I would recommend is 61. What I have here is the Yamaha P125, and this is a great instrument. I have used this at home to practice on. I have taught on this. It's super portable and light. I'm just gonna lift it a little bit. Like, it's easy to lift. It's not really, um, like, awkward. The speakers are built in, and they're right here. Now, with entry-level keyboards, the speakers are built in. Um, when you go up in price point, the speakers are actually not built in, they're separate. So. Good to know, <laughs> this one's got speakers. So the first thing I like to look at is how it sounds. So this is how it sounds. It's got really, really good sound. It's so important to play the instrument if you can. So bring some um, headphones to the store if you'd like so that you, know, you don't have to be self-conscious about people hearing you. But reflect on how that sounds to you, and this will be different for everybody. Play up high, play down low, and I actually find that this one has a really clear sounding lower end. I love that about this keyboard. Then move on to feel. So how does it feel under your hands? This one feels really good. I can get a good range of dynamics. I love that. Um, the keys feel nice under my fingers, and the amount of pressure I have to place to play Perfect. And then the third thing is features. So some keyboards have all the bells and whistles and some do not. Now this one's very simple. There's a metronome in here. Um, there are one, two, three, four, five, six sort of sound options. It looks like there's a few variations of them. So you know, you can have the strings. I think you can even layer them. Yeah. So. I love the usability of this keyboard because everything you need is just right here. There's no questions or guessing. Piano is piano and you can just sit down and play. So I highly recommend the Yamaha P125. Next up we have the Casio Privia. So there are a lot of models for the Casio Privia. Um, this one is the PXS3000. Let's just see how it sounds. about this one is the speakers aren't up here. They're actually pointed away from you as the player, which I'm actually not experiencing the sound in the same way, and I don't know if I love that. This one also has a nice feel. So the texture of these keys, like it feels almost like they put a texture on it, like the Yamaha was smooth and these have a bit of a, I don't know, textured finish on them. So I think that's meant to feel like um, an acoustic piano. Uh, the feel is good, but the key has a bit of a side-to-side -side wobble on it, which I don't, I don't love. Um, and the response isn't quite as quick, I feel, dynamically as the other keyboard. But that said, the sound's pretty good, and the feel is pretty good. So I would absolutely recommend this keyboard. And I think this one, this one's great, especially if you want more options, because like there are so many buttons. We've got like it's touch, so it feels super kind of, I don't know, 
Feels impressive. So if you like technology, whoa, more buttons are showing up. If you like technology, this would be a really good keyboard for you. Um, you need to spend some time, but there's splits and layers and all kinds of features, lots of sounds in this one too. So if you like experimenting with different sounds, uh, this would be a great, a great choice for you. Uh, the volume is here, so it's kind of a, yeah, it's awesome. Um, and again, this one's not too heavy. It's pretty easy to port around, and it looks really good. It's really like, I don't know, it's a fancy looking keyboard. So this model of the Privia is around $850. Uh, you can go for models that have slightly fewer features and then the price comes down a little bit, but the general you know, touch and feel of it stays the same throughout um, in this series. So another great beginner keyboard choice. Keyboard we're going to look at today is the Roland FP10. Now this is part of a series. There's the FP30 and maybe the 70 and a 90. I don't know exactly, but we're going to be looking at the FP10, which is their entry level keyboard. Now it's very simple. There are not a lot of options <laughs> on this one, uh, but the price is really good at $499. So this is a really, really affordable keyboard. And what I love about Roland keyboards is the way that the keys feel under the hand, they have a little bit of a resistance point. So if you if you press really lightly, there's a point at which it kind of almost feels like there's a little bit of a give. And that's meant to uh, mimic what you would feel on a hammer action piano, so an acoustic piano. So that's really cool. Um, I really like the feel of this one. It requires more pressure than the other two keyboards that we looked at. Um, so I'm having to have a little more you know, strength to get the sound I want out of it. The sound is good. Um, I would say that it's probably on par with the Yamaha in terms of sound and the feel. Um, there are, you know, if you if you don't want to put as much weight in your hands, then the Yamaha or the Casio might be better for you. But if you don't mind playing a little, um, a little more energy, then this one's great. You can still get a really awesome dynamic range out of it too. And the features, um, as I said, you know, it's <laughs> you got volume and you've got your sound. So um, it's, it's, a great, it's a great beginner keyboard. I really enjoy playing this one too. So you guys have so many options now. So we've looked at Casio, we've looked at Yamaha, we've looked at Roland, and now the fun part is you get to go shopping. So I highly, highly, highly recommend going and playing as many keyboards as you can to get a feel for what you like, the touch, the feel, the sound of the best. So happy shopping and comment below and let me know which one was your favorite.